Buenas tardes a todos. Good afternoon. This is Abelardo de la Peña Jr., Director of Marketing and Communications with La Plaza de Cultura y Artes, welcoming you to En Casa con La Plaza Cocina. La Plaza brings you these conversations, presentations, performances, and today a, a demonstration from our, our home to yours three, sometimes more times per week. It's our way of fulfilling our mission to tell the little known stories of Mexicans, Mexican Americans, and all Latinos in the founding growth and evolution of the Los Angeles region. region. And as you know, every Monday, three o'clock on the dot in Casa con la Plaza Cocina, where we do demonstrations of cooking, different cooking techniques, recipes, a whole lot of stuff. And today we have a special one. If you're on Zoom, please, we have the chat feature, let us know. Oh, I'm gonna start over here. If you're on, on Zoom, please, we have the chat feature, we have the Q&A, join in the fun. Those of you on Zoom, on Facebook, excuse me, those of you on Facebook, please, uh, we have the comments section. You can ask questions, make comments, tell us where you're viewing from. With that, En Casa Con La Plaza Cocina brings you our host, Jimena Martin, our director of programs and of, of director of program and culinary arts, blah, 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 blah. But before I do that, let me thank Northgate Gonzalez, our special sponsor for today, celebrating 40 years of community, serving our community. So please take it away, Jimena. Good afternoon. Gracias, Averaldo. Thank you. Thank you for the introductions. Thank you, Northgate, for today's um, sponsored uh, cooking class. Um, I'd like to introduce an old time friend of La Plaza, uh, Maite Gomez Rejon. She's the founder of Art Bites. Uh, she presents art and culinary history through lectures and cooking and tastings in museums across the country. Um, she has a BFA from a United, uh, excuse me, University of Texas at Austin, uh, MFA uh, from the Art Institute of Chicago, uh, Grand Diplom from the French Culinary Institute in New York. Um, she also has presented in the Today Show, Food and Wine, KCRW's uh, Good Food, and NPR's Splendid Table. Um, she has contributed to Life and Time, uh, to Eaton Magazine, and her essay. You can also find more of her writings and her essays in the Mexican Early Cookbooks that appears in the Oxford Research Encyclopedia of Latin American History. Today we have Ms. Maite. Maite, tell us, what are we going to make today? I'm so excited. We're making enmoladas today, which is basically we're making the, the mole. So we're not making mole from scratch because we would be here for at least three hours. Um, but we're making them, you know, putting together the mole paste and then running tortillas through them and filling them with um, with some queso fresco. So it's the ultimate comfort food for this for this cold day in L.A. You know, we've worked so much together. I really have to, haven't had a chance to ask you the questions. How did you start Art Bites? Like, what was your culinary journey to where you are today? I'm sure we have the young folks who are watching us and kind of curious on how you started your business and all the beautiful you do uh, work you do for the community. Huh. Thank you, thank you. Gosh, it, it was a long, it was a long process. It was a lot of um, what am I doing with my life for many, many years. I have a um, my I always, my family always cooked, so food was always a big part of my life. But I originally went to college uh, to be an artist. Um, I minored in art history, but it was more art making. I went to graduate school for that, and actually, when I was in graduate school, I was working at a puppetry theater. I was making puppets, um, and next door to the to the puppet studio, there was an elementary school, and kids would always come you know after school so we decided to start a weekend art program for them so that's how i got into teaching um by teaching these kids and taking them all over chicago for me you know to take them to museums and then i ended up moving to new york and went to culinary school and that's when i started really getting into museum education and teaching decided to go to culinary school, um, not knowing what I was going to do with it. And then eventually I started combining the art history with the food history. And then I started Art Bites about 12 years ago. Um, and now this is what I do. It was, it was definitely not a linear process whatsoever. It was a lot of, a lot of back and forth. Um, so yeah, <laughs> in a nutshell. 
<laughs> out of all the recipes, I know you you present at the Huntington, at the Getty, and all different places. What is your favorite type of food you like to present? What's your favorite? Because you know you cook for us all the time, but what do you like to do? For when I'm teaching, or just in, or you. What, what, what I like, you to like to make at home? Yes. Oh, what I like to make at home when I'm not working. Oh my god. <laughs> This, what I'm making today in moladas, like in moladas, black beans, fried plantains, that to me is heaven. So I love this kind of food, like comfort food. And then I also just like really simple, just like a piece of fish or grilled or baked piece of fish and the sim simple veggies and salads. I don't get too, I don't get too complicated really. <laughs> just like simple. I know today's is a little bit calm, even though we got a, a simplified version of it, but I know how <laughs> complex it is. Can you tell us the history of this complex, beautiful, dish yes mole is fascinating i actually about maybe when was it maybe about 15 years or so ago i was obsessed with learning about mole everything about mole um and it's 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 really sometimes people say oh it's as mexican as mole and it really is the ultimate fusion cuisine um which combines really old world and new world um ingredients it really is very complex like you say um, I have a bowl here, a, a plate here. I'm actually just going to move the camera over so that I could show you. Um, well, what's in this paste that I'll talk about in a minute, which is this mole uh, paste. Um, it's a combination of, let me just show this image here. It's a combination of so many different ingredients. And I have just some of them here. This is not even all of them um, that I'm showing you here. But this is basically Mexico in in a nutshell, in a in a bowl right here. Um, so the mole is a I'm trying to figure out where to get the best angle. I thought I had it before. There you go. There you go. There you go. That's a little bit better. Um, so it's a combination of so many different flavors, um, old world and new world ingredients. So it's basically a lot of chiles. I have two different chiles here, chile ancho and chile guajillo that is um, toasted um, before adding onion, regular red tomatoes, tomatillos, apples, um, plantains, onions, and then all of these different uh, spices, herbs and spices and nuts as well. There's almonds and pepitas, so the pumpkin seeds. Um, what else do I have here? Peanuts, bay leaves, oregano, thyme, cinnamon, raisins, allspice, uh, black pepper, cloves, sesame seeds, garlic, chocolate. It's pretty much everything. It's the entire world in one bowl, which is mixed together. Um, the chiles, the chocolate, the tomatoes, of course, native to Mexico plantains and sugar. I have a little bag, a little uh, bowl of sugar here, um, are actually native to India and had made their way to Europe before it made its way to Mexico. Um, then you have things like almonds and apples, which are you know, Mediterranean that had made their way over and all of these, and, and raisins as well, all of these Eastern uh, spices and sesame seeds are actually native to Africa. Um, so all of these different ingredients were then brought across, were brought over on the Manila galleons um, post-conquest, um, and they eventually became this really fascinating, well, Mexican food in general just became this really fascinating mix of different cultures. Um, and, and mole itself, it has some sweet and it has some savory, which is something that's definitely native to the sort of Middle Eastern cooking and the Moors had been in Spain to so sort of brought that over. Adding the chocolate and the chiles created something very, 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 very unique. Um, and the origins of the dish there, we have two regions of Mexico that make mole. It's Puebla, central Mexico, and then Oaxaca in southern Mexico. So they believe there's, there's various legends, but in the 17th century, in the convent of Santa Rosa in Puebla, there was an archbishop that was coming to visit, and the nuns, they spent a, nuns spent a lot of time in the kitchens basically creating Mexican cuisines and, you know, savory and sweet dishes, and they had this divine, they had a visit from an angel, and they started grinding, toasting chiles and grinding chiles and adding chocolate and created this sauce 
mole is the word mole is comes from muli which is the nahual word for sauce so it's basically mole is just a sauce um and they made the sauce cooked a turkey an old turkey added the sauce to it and this is believed to be the first mole that this archbishop he he loved um but the first time that we actually see a recipe for mole is from this was a sort of a legend in puebla Sor Juana Inés de la Cruz, she was a, a writer. She was published in Spain in the 17th century. She was a sort of brilliant um, woman. And she even, she has all these great quotes. And one of them, she says that if Aristotle would have cooked, he would have written a lot more. Um, so she has these sort of funny cooks. But she, there are 36 recipes, 36 of the earliest recipes that are existent um, are written in her hand in a manuscript. And she has an early recipe for, for mole. Um, and this is Sor Juan en la Cocina. There's, this is the collection of the, of the 36 recipes. Um, and her recipe is called Mancha Manteles. Mm -hmm. So in, in Oaxaca, in, in Puebla, there's the, the, they're known for their black mole or their red mole. Oaxaca is known for seven different types of moles. And the Mancha Manteles, even though she, lived, she was in Mexico City, um, the Mancha Manteles is, is one of these recipes, which literally means get the tablecloth dirty. Yes. Um, and it's it is it's a it's it's a process to make more than they you usually see it in Mexico um, you know you if you're gonna spend a whole day making the mole you're gonna make a huge batch of it um, and use it for special occasions um, I'm, I made mole this 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 week I made a pumpkin mole and the big joke was it almost broke my Vitamix <laughs> It had so much stuff in it. It had stale tortillas. It had bread. It had all kinds of stuff. And my favorite list of well, ingredient, I love this word, anjoli. Anjoli, me too. I love that. So I think it's an Arabic word. So it's so interesting how language also kind of transcends with food as well as language. Um, I just want to uh, acknowledge some of our viewers here. We have Bess from Miracle Mile, uh, Teresa C Casale from South Orange County. We have Carol Baker from Colorado Springs. Claudia Remijo from Connecticut, uh, born and raised in LA. She says, go Dodgers. <laughs> um, Natalie Kingsford from uh, San Antonio. Uh, Christina Jones from Los Angeles, but then one, just uh, we had a guest here, her computer froze. If you can one more time show the, the label of the mole that was picked up at um, Northgate, she's wondering what is the name of the, the mole, the, of the brand of mole. Yeah, I just I showed it briefly because I wanted to come back to it again. So basically all of this, there's a whole process of toasting the chile, um, toasting, like you said, the tortillas, to get different shades of brown or different shades of you know black or with the black mole or red but this and then it's just cooked 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 cooked, cooked until you form a paste this is the one from from northgate this is actually from guerrero which is another state in in mexico um so let me just see it's called um Campa campana is the brand and it's the the red mole um and i love that this is it's really good basically it's it's a super thick paste um, and all you have to do, and I'll be doing this in a, in a little bit, just diluting it with, with chicken broth. Um, that's basically all you have to do. It's much easier than going through this whole process. And it's the same you know, ingredients. Here it says ancho chile, sesame seeds, peanuts, pumpkin seeds, salt, chocolate, corn, toasted corn, garlic, cinnamon, sugar, oil, and spices, that's it. Um, so it's actually pretty, it's pretty great. I remember growing up um, on the border of Laredo and Nuevo Laredo, we also always used to go across to, to buy the mole. It was like these, these little, in the grocery store, these, these little pyramids of mole. So you would just buy, buy it by the pounds, the red, the green, the black. Um, so they're, they're all very, very complex with dozens of different, uh, ingredients that, that go into it, which is- yeah. really If cool. folks get a chance to go to East LA and Mercadito, they still have stalls with those little mountains of the different color moles, and then the lady will come and serve it and sell it to you by the pound. Yeah, so There's that. yellow, green, red, um, a variety of colors. Um, before we get started, we have a question from Teresa Casal um, asking, what is the best place to read about history of mole? It's fascinating. Ooh, That's a good book. Um, what's a good book? Gosh, 
There's a lot of, uh, there are a lot of books that I could think of in Spanish. Um, I need to, I'll, I'll think about it um, and I'll send you, and I'll, and I'll send you maybe to, to forward over. I can't think of anything in English off the top of my. Well, Diana head. Kennedy, she's got her thing too. Um, I think Did her you Oaxaca. Go into history though? I don't know. Uh, while you're cooking, I'll go look at my book and see if it's okay. a good suggestion. But I know she, it's just on Oaxaca. She might be specializing in Oaxacan okay. um, mole versus other regions. Um, but no, but please. Yeah, there's a lot um, that I know in, in Spanish, there's actually quite a bit uh, written about it. And it really, you could just by looking at the ingredients, you could really see the trade routes. You could really see who conquered who just by, you know, picking apart all of these ingredients. It's really quite fascinating. And I also think it's just so interesting when people say, oh, there's nothing more Mexican than mole. Well, it is, it's the, the ultimate fusion cuisine, um, basically just, just right here. And like I said, in, in Oaxaca, there's seven different types from the black, which is the most famous that has, that has the chocolate, um, the red one, that's a little bit less sweet than the black. And then there's the coloradito, which literally means a different shade of red. Um, and then you have the green one and the yellow one and the mancha manteles that gets your tablecloths dirty. And they all have sort of slightly different ingredients. Only the only three of them, or actually only two of them, have chocolate. So not all of the moles have have um, have chocolate. And it's typically used, um, like I said, in I went to Oaxaca a few years ago. Like I said before, it's kind of researching them, the seven moles. And everybody would tell me, oh, my, my grandmother makes the best coloradito and my, my aunt makes the best this and the best that. Um, and I went, there was a wedding um, that uh, this woman that I met was, was making mole for. And it's the whole family was outside toasting the chiles and the toasting the, the tortillas to get, not burning everything, just to get the right shade of black. Um, and then going to the local um, mill to grind all of this, like Kimena, you said that you 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 almost killed your Vitamix. This is why yeah, my Vitamix was so food. heavy because of chunks of the pumpkin and the bread and the nuts and the piloncillo. I got scared. I had like to stop it, even though it's very powerful as we know the Vitamix can be. But that's how powerful the ingredients were it's in so, the blender. It's so thick. Actually, the last class I taught in person pre-COVID was a Oaxacan class. It was a three hour class and we made the, the mole from, from start to, to finish. Um, but it's, it's, it's a whole process, toasting, the, or toasting everything. It's a whole, it's a whole process. We, before we get going, Veronica Miller just posted, she says, um, a book I have that I have has some good mole recipes is The Food and Life of Oaxaca by uh, uh, Sarela Martinez. Sarela Martinez, she's great. Her, her book is great. Also, the Gelaguetza, which is this restaurant um, down in Koreatown in LA, their cookbook has a good mole recipe. I've made their, their mole rojo is the, is the one that I've made. But uh, Sarela is, is, a, is a great, it's a great, oh. I see that from a class in surface years ago. That was years ago. That's fantastic yeah. that you that you still make that. Um, yeah, it's it, it's a whole it's a whole process. It's a whole process. Um, but so we thought, oh, Day of the Dead is coming up, and mole is one of these dishes. I mean, and, and the the holiday is is really celebrated all over Mexico and and in countries um, in the U.S. and in cities with a big uh, Latino population or Mexican population, but Mole is one of the dishes in, in Oaxaca it's celebrated grandly um, and mole is one of the dishes that is always served. So this is why we thought, okay, let's make mole for, for, this, uh, for this particular class. We'll make some, some enmoladas for this particular class um, because it is so delicious. Um, so should I talk a little bit about the history of, should I stay on mole, talk a little bit about the history of Day of the Dead? Let's start with Day of the Dead. Let's get ready for Day of the Dead since it's next week. It's next week. Yeah. So it's November 2nd. Um, so it's coming up the Day of the Dead. November 1st and November 2nd. November 1st is the day that celebrates deceased children and the 2nd uh, celebrates the adults. Um, and so it's such a fascinating uh, holiday. And I think that a lot of people in the U.S. really learned about it through Coco, through the movie, the cartoon Coco, which is the sweetest thing I saw. I've seen it a million times and I cry and cry and cry and cry because it's just so beautiful. 
Um, but there's this idea in, in, in Mexico, or especially in, for the ancient Mesoamericans, um, that life and death were not two independent states. You know, they were, they were th this life that we're living today was just, basically the death is just a continuation of this life that we're living today. This doesn't end, it just transforms into something else. So it's not something that should be sad necessarily. And tears, when, you're, when people are mourning, tears were discouraged because the souls, um, it would just make the path slippery with the tears, it would make the path slippery to the souls that are then going to this other, to this other world, to this other level. So this whole idea of life being, death being a continuation of life is so, is so profound, right? And it's something that, you know, only through death can life exist. So there is this, this thinking, um, and death was such a, such a part of life. Um, there were all sorts of, you know, human sacrifices as well. Um, the sun god, the Huitzilopochtli, the sun god, um, it had to be fed uh, hearts. Um, so there were these, you know, human sacrifices in order to ensure that there was going to be another cycle, that there was going to be another year. So these sacrifices, um, as, as scary as they seem, um, they really were basically to ensure life. Um, and there was one, my, I think, I don't, it's weird to say that my favorite, but it's like this god uh, associated with vegetation and with, with renewal, Shipetotec. They would have these these ceremonies where you would you they would cut the heart out of the sacrificial victim and then carefully flay their skin and turn it inside out and then a priest would wear the skin of the sacrificial victim um, and this was a good thing like if you were chosen to wear this skin this was an honor um, and then eventually the skin that you were wearing would rot it took about about 20 days and then you would emerge from this so with death kind of comes life. So this was very much a part of life um, for the ancient Mesoamericans. Um, they would make little 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 skulls, like the sugar skulls that you see, um, out of amaranth and honey, and sometimes a little bit of blood as well. Um, and they had these sort of, you know, these festivals. These, these not necessarily festivals like we do today, but but to honor the deceased. Um, a lot of people are buried with dogs, with little sculptures of dogs. They're the the most um, portrayed, you know, dog. They're my favorite, the cholos, the They're cholos so squinkles. They're, They're adorable. Without the hair. Yeah, we see them. The animal was thought to be the only animal that could guide the deceased through this path to get to the underworld. So we see lots of little dogs, people buried with dogs. Um, so around the same time in Europe, we have the All Saints Day and All Souls Day that correspond to November 1st and November 2nd. And kind of that tradition was brought over. They used to make bread um, to, in, in medieval Spain, offer bread to the, to the deceased in, their, in the cemetery, pan de animas, which means spirit bread. It's a bread with orange blossom, which when it, came, that tradition came over to Mexico, wheat came along um, to Mexico, it turned into the pan de muerto, which I have here, a little pan de muerto. Um, and here we see these little things on top here represent bones, it's like a little skull and crossbones. Um, but this comes from this tradition of uh, pan de animas, from um, this, this is, this is amazing. This was actually made by Jimena, which is homemade by Jimena, which is so delicious. Um, but this idea of this bread and mole uh, are symbols of the earth. So today you, you have these the sort of day of the dead and people go to the altars and leave all sorts of foods and sell all sorts of ingredients um, that represent the four elements. So you see the earth, you see fire, you see water, you see air. So the pan de muerto and mole, sometimes tamales as well, or, or uh, calabaza, like a sweetened uh, pumpkin. Um, this represents this idea of the of the earth. Um, so this connection to the to the earth. Um, so there's the earth. There is this whole idea of wind with the the papel picado, the, the paper that has all of these little decorations. 
kind of shows it's it's it, it represents the fra the fragility of of life and this kind of connection between life and death. Also, the monarch butterflies that we see flying, you know, going through Mexico um, in the fall. It is kind of these spirits that are coming to to visit. I don't have any of that here, but I do have my mom actually sent me a little monarch butterfly mask. That's my favorite. Um, that's my favorite mask that we see here. But it kind of represents this idea of you know the ancestors coming to visit. So that's the the earth and the air. Um, and then we have um, fire. Um, so sort of this idea of having fire to guide the souls. Um, so we see candles and also marigolds. So I have this this little skull here. Um, with the marigold flowers, the Sempasuchi flowers. And this is a flower that's actually native to Mexico. It's very, um, it's a very distinct smell. I don't, I wouldn't necessarily call it a, a pretty, like a sweet smell. It's a very, very strong, um, a very strong uh, smell. Um, but this is said to hold the, the heat um for the for the basically for the for the souls um and the along with the candles the marigold flowers just kind of light the the way so this is sort of the representation of of um of the fire and then of course water with the mezcal so i have a bottle of mezcal here which is native to to oaxaca i like that this one is called vida um i didn't plan it it's just the mezcal that i had the vida so you'll have either pulque or a little bit of mezcal or um, some chocolate, just something to quench the, the, the thirst of the, of, the, of the souls that are traveling, that have been traveling to visit the family for, for, an, entire, for an entire year. Um, so it's definitely fun and it's definitely something super, super festive. Yeah, here at La Plaza every year is one of our favorite family-friendly family days. We would engage with the stage, have various art workshops, and really celebrate the Day of the Dead and tell that positive story of passing and living in the afterlife. And the past few years, we've been able to partner with another group that escapes my mind right now. We would show Coco for free. So um, after the family day, we would kind of shut it down, clear up, and then invite the families. And we had vendors who would sell chocolate, who would sell the uh, pan de muerto, and just have a really fun, free family day at La Plaza for Day of the Dead. Like today, I posted on my Facebook, I'm, I'm missing, I'm missing my work, I'm missing yeah. um, bringing the families and the kids and the dancers, and, you know, and again, celebrating with Families Day of the Dead. Yeah. Let's celebrate today with you and with yeah. your recipe. <laughs> it is. It is such a beautiful festival. I mean, I love the idea of kind of bringing people together, and 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 it's also interesting, like when uh, you know, in the in the 17th century, when this tradition or this holiday really picked up in Mexico, combining these these two different, you know, these two different worlds, right? This this um, this sort of ancient, you know, Mesoamerican practice of celebrating death and. There was no concept of hell, you know. That was def that was something that was Catholic, um, but but in in the 17th century Spain, there was the plague, like the the you know everybody was dying. So you know, death was such a huge part of life already. So it just kind of blended with these traditions and became something very very festive. Um, just real quick, I had someone asking about the recipe of the the bread. Um, the recipes, um, we don't have a, a typical recipe today per se because um, it's a pre-made paste that you can find at Northgate. However, if you are interested in making pan de muerto, I found the recipe online with Meli Martinez. She has a new book, which I usually have here. Uh, the recipe is not in her book. If you go online, she's super generous with all her recipes. So you can go at mexicoinmykitchen.com, concha recipe. And it's easy enough. I'm a first time baker and they came out delicious, super easy. So if you wanted to have this new tradition in your home and make the pan de muerto, besides supporting our local bakers, maybe make some at home. So that was just to answer someone's questions here. From no, that's great. Alonso. And it's delicious. It's so delicious. Yeah, for being a first time baker, it's the <laughs> worked out. Yeah, and I agree that Meli Martinez, her her recipes, I've made a few of her recipes in there and they're so good. And she sometimes has little videos too that are that are helpful. Yeah, she'll be speaking, I think in March we're gonna bring her. Um but okay. I, I don't have her book here at hand, but it's Mexico. Let's see, Mexico in my uh in my kitchen. It's a really sweet, nice introductory book to for Mexican cuisine at home. So and we can't she, wait to get this many. 
lives in Dallas, I think. Yes, she lives in Dallas. Yeah, yeah. it's so, yeah, her stuff is really, really great. Um, and this is so interesting because I think because of the addition of that orange blossom water, it has this another layer of the whole world that's in the that's in this that's in Mexico. Um, should we start making some memorada? Yes, Does anybody please. have any questions about Day of the Dead? About anything? We, we have any some we have some saludos from uh, Cayuga. I can't say it. Cuyahaga Falls, Ohio. Oh wow. Um, Commerce, uh, California, from Hollywood, um, Lorena from South Pasadena, Gregorio from San Francisco. Yay. So they're Welcome. coming along. Thank you all for being here. I wanted to point out, you know, one, actually just a couple of my things about Mole real quick before I, before I get, keep going. Um, so Sarwana, we see this, this recipe of the mancha manteles. And then the, the first cookbook isn't published in Mexico until 1831. And we don't see a lot of very, you know, we don't see the tortillas that is published is not the corn tortilla, but it's the Spanish potato and egg tortilla. And if those of you have taken my classes before, I mentioned this, I've mentioned this book quite a bit because I'm obsessed with cookbooks. But even the, you know, the corn was a little, you know, for the, for the lower classes, but there are 20 different recipes for mole. Um, and I have a copy here of that particular book. This is a 1900 copy. There are 30 different recipes for, for mole. Um, but they say that the, the mole poblano is the best poblano. But it's really interesting. And if anybody's more interested in learning more about this whole idea of these rituals, these um, sacrifices that sound so eerie, um, but are so just much connected to life, this is actually a great book called Sacred Consumption. Um, if anybody is is interested, I highly recommend it. Um, Elizabeth Moran, she's actually a dear friend of mine that I used to work with when we were in our early 20s. Um, this is actually a really great book if anybody is is interested in learning more about these, you know, about these about these rituals. Not necessarily Day of the Dead, but just about these rituals. Another great resource for books. Um, again, just be, I don't want everybody to leave behind. Um, Mary Lugo from Palmdale. Elizabeth uh, from Pico Rivera, but also Michelle Godina says Tia Tucha Centro Cultural has a Facebook YouTube page and they just did um, a Day of the Dead, Pan de Muerto um, on YouTube. And also it's a great place for cultural books. I'm not sure if they have cookbooks, but they have, um, you know, relevant, uh, community relevant books and stories for adults and for children. So again, check out Tia Chucha Centro Cultural on YouTube and learn how to make Pan de Muerto um, via YouTube. Oh, interesting. Interesting. I, I don't, I've never heard about them. I'm gonna have to they're based in the, they're based in the Valley and we've partnered with them because we did, um, April 1st is like the, or April is the month of poetry. And so they would bring their poetry books and we provide a platform there at Plaza and we would do poetry with them and they do book readings and things like that. So a nice, for those in the Valley, let's help support, um, Tia Chuchas. Okay. Perfect. Perfect. Um, so I'm going to be making, that's good to know. Thank you for that. I'm going to be making mole rojo, the red mole. So it's a little bit less sweet than the, than the black mole. It still has chocolate, um, but a little bit, a little bit less. And then there's the coloradito. That's a different shade of red. That's a little bit even less sweet than this and a little bit more spicy than this. So this is what I'm going to, what I'm going to do. I'm actually just going to put this. It's about half a container. So I would say what, maybe about a cup. Um, and I'm just going to put it in that pan over there with some chicken broth, um, just to, just to, you know, just to make a sauce, basically, just to make a, a thick sauce. Um, so I'm just going to head over here and heat this up, but if you, anybody has any questions? Well, they're asking, um, is there any tradition to drink mezcal before actually making them moladas? Oh, tradition <laughs> to drink I don't know, I mean, you could start the tradition. I think that's a good tradition. Um, not necessarily. I mean, but you know, mezcal is, is um, from Oaxaca. Like this is it's it's known for for its mezcal, and um, and and um, and so is mole. Even though this mole that we're making today is not from is not from Oaxaca, but um, there's not necessarily a tradition for for consuming both of them together. But it's all it's always it's a good it's always a good. They're always they're good together for sure. Um, yeah. this up and add, I'm going to start with about a cup of the broth. So this will dilute pretty quickly and I'll show you what, what I want it to look like. 
once it once it heats up. I'll show you the consistency. So, so basically for the enroladas, and this is, I mean, I feel like the term enchiladas is something that's very familiar to everybody. Um, and then there's, which literally just means in chile, so enchiladas, and then there's en, en frijoladas, which is like in beans, in frijoles, en moladas are just, you know, you basically, you, you put the tortilla in the, in the chile or in the beans or in the mole. So this is, this is actually something that my mom um, used to make all the time when I was growing up these enmoladas, or actually both, and we would have more enmoladas and enfrijoladas than the, than the, than the chile, um, and which is basically what I'm going to do is just, I have some, some corn tortillas here that I'm just going to pass through hot oil. I have some, just some regular, uh, what do I have, it's grapeseed oil that I'm using, but just vegetable oil. You want to heat this up and then just pass the tortillas through, and then typically you would, I'm just gonna keep that going because it's such a, this one has a low flame. Um, typically, you would then put the tortillas through oil and then pass them through the, the mole uh, sauce um, so that it's coated on both sides and then roll them with chicken or with cheese. I'm actually making them with cheese. I just have some, some crumbled queso fresco. Um, I'm really good at breaking the tortillas every time I put them in the mole. So rather than putting it in, um, I'm just going to fry them lightly and then roll them with the cheese and then I'm just going to pour the sauce over, over them. One way that my mom used to always make it, um, that I actually haven't tasted in years, I'm going to, I'm craving it now though, is, um, is actually putting the tortillas through the sauce, through the mole, and then laying them out on a baking dish, and then putting a layer of chicken and cheese or both, another layer of tortillas passed through the sauce, and basically making a lasagna. Um, it's called a budin azteca, like an Aztec pudding is what she calls it. Maybe that's just what it, I think that's just what it calls, what it's called. And then cheese on top, and then sticking it in the oven so all of the cheese is kind of oozy. And then if you're if they break, then it just doesn't, then it doesn't matter. All right, we got a couple questions here. First of all, um, Elena Herrada, uh, she said salud desde Detroit. Wow. Highland Park, Cindy Fong. Um, and then um, Let's see, uh, Michael Sheriffs is asking, did the Catholic Church co-op El Dia de los Muertos, or did the celebration as we know it grow um, more syncretic at, to, oh, from the bottom up from the people? Ah, oh, that's a really good question. Um, I think it's a little bit of a combination of both, um, because these rituals of celebrating the dead, you know, in medieval Europe, um, they, were, they were pagan, there were these pagan rituals. So the Catholic Church kind of co-opted, you know, that, either to assimilate these pagans or to, you know, just kind of make them forget about what they were doing, but they kind of took, you know, parts of this. And then when it arrived in, in Mexico, well, when, you know, when the conquest in the 16th century conquest, and then in the subsequent, you know, centuries with the Black Death, they were living with death, you know, when they, when, you know, there was a Black Death in, in Seville, right? They were sort of living with this. Um, so it's just something that kind of naturally, you know, blended together. They were converting all of the native people to Catholicism. Um, and this was something that had ar was already existing in a way in Europe um, with converting all of these pagans. Um, so it, it, the, the tradition just kind of, it kind of fits, you know, it found, kind of fit together. Um, so it really is a blend of of both of these different, uh, of both of these different uh, world views. And one switch for the other, because in uh, Mesoamerican times, the amaranth, they would actually make sculptures. And you said mentioned oh, wow. earlier uh, with the skulls with, with um, amaranth and honey to create these figurines. Exactly. And then when the Spanish came with meat, then we have, you know, pan de muerto. However, um, amaranth was banned amaranth from use banned because it was considered very spiritual, um, and they're, again, they were kind of too pagan for what the Catholics wanted to convert over to. So at one point, Amaranth was um, forbidden. Amaranth and we don't, see it, we don't see it till later. It's still with us um, through Alegrias. Yes, that's what I was going to say. Exactly. Amaranth, the same thing happened in, in, in 
South America with quinoa. They just banned all these sacred grains um, were, were banned, but they would make these little these skulls or little bones um, that are basically the alegrias that you see today in Mexico with the, with the amaranth um, that, that are called the alegrias. Now it's just a, now it's just a typical you know, candy, but it is, you know, and then now you see the sugar skulls and sugar was something that was brought over. Um, but it's so fascinating to see how these two traditions just kind of, are not, they're not even traditions really, they're just, they're these world views, you know, that, that just blended, you know, together. Um, yeah, and the quinoa, it's so interesting, this whole idea of, oh, let's ban quinoa, is these tiny little seeds that are easily carried by birds or by wind. So even though they banned it, it was, it was, it was popping up, like it was just not gonna go, it was not gonna go anywhere. Um, I'm heating up, so let me just show you the consistency of this, of this sauce. So I don't know if you could kind of see, it's pretty thick. Let me just put the, the camera right here so that, um, so that you can kind of see what it looks like. I think if they have a question about the Azteca style lasagna, the Budin yeah, Azteca, yeah. That, is that specifically from a region? Is that like the, from your, where your mom's from? Or is that something throughout Mexico? I think it's throughout. I mean, she definitely, she would make it with, um, with, 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 uh, with mole. Well, I think she would buy the mole poblano, I'm pretty sure is what she would, she would buy when I was growing up. Um, but it's not necessarily, my mom is from Mexico City. I don't think it's necessarily a regional thing. I think it's just a, a good way to, you know, to do what, what you do with your leftover chicken. Really. I think that's what, how she would, how she would do it. But, um, so yeah, she just to call it, uh, Budina Azteca. Budina but I remember Azteca. my friends would come over and they were like, what is this? So I don't, I don't think she made it. No, she didn't make it up. It's, it's definitely a thing. From somewhere. And then also real quick, where can we find the, uh, Sor Juana in La Cocina book? Oh, the Sor Juan en la Cocina. Um, gosh, I can't remember where I where I got this book. Um, I have an uncle in Mexico who who often sends me a bunch of books, but I'll show you. Monica Lavin, actually, this she's a, a food historian. Um, so I think this is. I'm, I'm sure you could find this online. I don't think this is um, a difficult you know book mm -hmm. to find. So Ana Lavin, Ana Benitez Muro. Um, and it's just, it, it has a nice introduction and it has all of her recipes um, on here, the 36 recipes. Um, so whoops, I let this go a little bit too, thicken this a little bit too much. I'm just gonna pour, I'm actually gonna pour the rest of this chicken broth in there and then just lower the heat. Um, and I want to show you what this looks like. I'm heating the oil. And I'm not gonna fry the tortillas. I'm just gonna lightly pass them through the, just want to show you what this kind of the consistency of this. So it's a nice, it's it's not super thick and it's not super thin. I don't want like the a seat the the tortillas to be kind of see through. You know, I, I want them to really be covered in the sauce. Um, so I just have that on really low heat. I'm going to just leave this in here, and then I'm just using these uh, store bought tortillas. Also. Um, Mine tend to break with this because they're so thin. These particular uh, tortillas are so thin. So sometimes the uh, tortillas are, are a little bit thicker and those definitely hold their own a little bit better. But I'm just gonna put them on here. Uh, let me just bring another platter here. Um, so I'm just going to get my tongs here and then just pass them through. I'm gonna lower my heat a little bit. I can see that it's really, really hot. So I'm just gonna put them in here. I'm not gonna fry them. I don't really want any color on them. I'm just gonna put a few on here. Um, for those who are interested in actually tasting pastel azteca, uh, my coworker Kim Chavez says she can always get pastel azteca at the Luz del Dia over on Olvera Street. It's like a layered Mexican lasagna. Okay, oh, that's good to know. Yeah, I was thinking, oh, should I make that today? So good. So again, I'm just, I'm not frying them because I, I don't want to make those tadas. I just want to kind of put them in here so that they can really hold their shape. I'm just going to put them now in the oil. This is the simplest, simplest thing. Simplest, simplest recipe. Um, I'm actually going to just do maybe two more. Um, 
And does anybody have any other, are there any other questions? No, we have some folks were asking about your mole recipe that you did a couple of years back at Surface. Uh -huh. That's like a, a little sidebar. We'll figure out internally um, okay. how to connect um, these okay. folks here. Yeah, I, I'm sure that was a long time ago. That was actually when I was just getting started with Art Bites. And, um, and I used to do a lot of demos at, at Surface. And that's so funny, Kim. And I, I was just telling you somebody that I used to that used to run the surface kitchen is now making incredible bread. So that was it was uh, my my early. I had hadn't been in LA that long, and I met some people that I'm that I'm still very good friends with um, through that through those uh, surface days, which is now well the original store closed, but um, they are still around. So now I already just broke this one a little bit. So, um, I have a question. Susan Nades is asking, would homemade corn tortillas work on this? Yes, one? absolutely. Homemade corn tortillas would be would be incredible. Um, yeah. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to actually let me let me put this on here. Like I said, I'm not going to put them through the through the um, through the sauce. So I'm, I have my plate here, and so I'm just going to. Put some cheese in the middle. Oh my gosh, and my mouth is already watering and there's no more in there yet. So, and I'm just gonna roll them. And this is like heaven. So, so again, if your tortillas are a little bit thicker, definitely, uh, put them in the sauce, in the mole, you know, before you, you roll them. I, mine are just they're not holding their shape because they're super thin. Um, so this is, this is probably too much for two, for one person, um, but you can certainly, this is, you know, you could plate them individually or you can just put them on a platter, which is what I'm doing now. And this is great. Just this black beans, oof, the best. So I'm just gonna do this last one. And now I'm just gonna pour the sauce over it. Nice, it's nice and hot. Just loosening this up a little bit. Look at that. It's beautiful. Is everybody's mouth watering because I'm at mine is. I'm just gonna drown it. There you go. Let's get a little bit more. And then all I'm gonna do now is just garnish it with some cheese. And then I'm gonna eat this and sleep for the rest of the day, probably. This is so heavy. And I like to put a little bit of sesame seeds on it. I love just just the sesame seeds. Sometimes you'll see, you know, tomato or lettuce. I don't like that. I just like this. Just just I'm a purist. Look at that. How good That's, does that look? People are already drooling. They want smell of vision. I'm ready for a bite as well. They look delicious. And so what's so fast. easy, it's already prefab paste. So if you want to cheat, super easy, yeah. You can buy the paste and mix it up with chicken stock or vegetable stock as you wish. Or if you want to take half a day or plus to get all those beautiful ingredients yeah. and create together. It is. I mean, it's definitely I, if you've never made mole, I definitely encourage you to do it. It takes it takes a long time. But to be honest, you could find some good some good quality, you can find some good quality uh, pre-made pre -made paste. That's a good one. Um, yeah, you could definitely find some good quality stuff. But um, yeah, this is, look at this, this is so good. I'm so excited. I have a little bit of the paste. I think that's gonna be tonight's dinner as well. After yeah, we're done here. Just like this, nothing. Uh, you can, Sometimes you'll see it with like little slices of onion or parsley, but I like it just like this. No, no, no fresh stuff. Not for this. That's that's for stuff. That's that's for later, <laughs> or for a separate dish. Um, 
Any questions? Any other questions or comments? I think folks are asking right now, like, where could they buy the book? I mean, they could do like a search on Amazon. Um, I know there's um, La Ruse, there's the Mexican library online that you, books where you can buy stuff online, but just, you know, Google it, Amazon's your friend, and um, to look for it. I'm going to be looking for it too as well. Yeah, and I'll also, um, I'll look, and I'll also, there was that question earlier about, about books on Mole. I know I have a bunch of stuff. There's there's a book that I have specifically on uh, Puebla, of uh, cooking in in Puebla specifically, and it has a big section on on mole. Um, so I'll definitely I'll I'll pass this over to you, and then if you wouldn't mind sharing. Absolutely. To, uh, sharing Absolutely. Topic. Yeah. Um, thank you so much. Is there anything else? Oh, someone just posted of Romans, Romans in Pasadena, also special oh. orders, any books that they don't already carry. Um, Silver Magazine also has a recipe for mole. Oh, someone took a look for the, one of the sword books is $800 on Amazon. $800? I, I didn't <laughs> think you not pay eight hundred dollars. <laughs> Maybe eight hundred pesos. Maybe that's what it is. Yeah. yeah no, I just bought I bought some books from Mexico the other day. It's like a thousand something. That's like fifty two dollars. Yeah. Um, no. 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 Yeah. I'll I'll do some digging. There's no way that it's yeah that it's that it's eight hundred dollars. <laughs> I'm books not going to books, but I'm not going to buy. I'm not going to buy anything for dollars. They have the Kindle version for five ninety nine. So there's options. There's They're options awesome. out there. Yeah. Definitely, there are options. Thank you so much. Thank you, Abelardo. Thank you very much, Maite. Thank you very much, Jimena. Yeah, they, they do look mouth-watering as <laughs> usual. We get to see and these, uh, these wonderful dishes being made and being explained to all of you, our viewers. So uh, this, if you came in late to En Casa con la Plaza Cocina today, uh, you could catch this recording video on our YouTube channel at LA, uh, La Plaza LA and also our website LAPCA.org. This along with 20 plus other recipes that we put up there with chefs. Maite, you've been with us a few times, thank you so much, but also other chefs, restaurant owners, cooks, and, and people that just love their food and love to showcase their recipes with all of us. Uh, again, if you didn't catch it, please go to YouTube, go to Facebook, go to our uh, website. Also, next week, another En Casa Con La Plaza Cocina. We're, we're keeping on the Dia de los Muertos tip. And here we have a little preview here, Vegan Sugar Skulls with Melissa Martinez from Vegancitas on Monday, November 2nd, 3 o'clock here at En Casa Con La Plaza. I'm not sure, is it still going to be Pacific Daylight Time? I don't know. I think it, it's this weekend coming up, no? It'll still be three o'clock on Monday. Okay, <laughs> no matter when, three o'clock on Monday. Also, we have another series of uh, virtual programming. It's called En Familia con la Plaza. And this one is directed for families, for children, for everybody, really. And uh, this is Dia de los Muertos themed as well. Could you tell us a little about those, Jimena? Yes, if you guys are for families, we've uh, made special uh, videos and virtual videos for our kids. So we've done um, satchels, um, we've done, um, oh gosh, uh, calabaza, and tacha. calabaza and tacha. And the one that's coming up, I am throwing a blank, but please okay. keep tuned. They're free, uh, 1030 on Saturdays on our YouTube channel. And again, it's all geared for families since we can't have our beautiful family days for uh, Day of the Dead. At least we can be offering these again free public programs for our children um, on a weekly basis on Saturdays for Day of the Dead. Yes, yeah, so thank you. They do premiere on YouTube every Saturday at 10:30. That's uh, youtube.com La Plaza LA. Again, thank you everybody. We'd like to thank our special sponsor for today, Northgate Market, and the creators of today's mole. And uh, their it's their 40th anniversary there this year. They've been big supporters of La Plaza, and we hope that they continue to be, do so. And I'm going to go ahead and share their website. Right now, they have their uh, showcasing on their website. I'm just checking it out here, uh, making your own altar. So build an altar and continue your traditions on, for Via de los Muertos. So gracias a todos, Northgate Market, Maite, Jimena, todos, everybody out there. Nos vemos pronto en Casa con la Plaza Cocina. Bye-bye. Thank you. Gracias. Bye.